Greetings, friends. Welcome once again to our weekly devotional here at Clearwater Church. This week, we conclude our study on the subject of one thing. In our previous study, we covered the one thing David desired above all else. We learned David's singular focus on God, his character, and his laws enabled him to be victorious in many different ways and in many different situations because he was always looking to the Lord and he was only motivated by pleasing him and dwelling with him. This next study addresses how we relate to our past and what we aim for in the future. When the Apostle Paul wrote the epistle to the Philippian church, he had accomplished some amazing things for the kingdom of heaven. But he knew that he was not yet finished. And he wrote in Philippians 3, verses 13 through 14, he said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. We will learn about the need for progress in our Christian life to always move forward towards the mark that God has given us. Exploring this subject will teach us how we should relate to our past and always aim for the future. In these verses, Paul emphasizes the need for progress in Christian living. He presents himself as an example of one who continually reaches ahead to see God's kingdom. First, we'll look at the subject of forgetting the past. In Philippians 3, verse 12, Paul stressed to the readers that he did not consider himself perfected or to have attained all that God had for him. He was still involved in the struggles of his present life. He said, I'm not perfect. In his other writings, he said that he was the chiefest of sinners. In Romans 7, he even described his internal battle with the flesh, saying that he sometimes did the things he didn't want to do and didn't do the things that he wanted to do. As we all know, Paul had a rough start. He was responsible for persecuting Christians. And when he first converted to Christ, many other believers were afraid of him because of his reputation. However, Paul didn't dwell on the things he had done in the past. He used it as an example of the greatness of the love of Christ and the potential that each of us has if we will turn to him and allow him to work in us and through us. He said in our verse of the week, This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth to those things which are before. His life was reduced to one thing. It wasn't in dwelling on his past mistakes. He forgot those things and pressed forward. This is such an encouragement to me. No matter what we've done in the past, God is a God who forgives. And if we have a troubled past, like many of us do, We have to allow God to cleanse us from those things and not dwell on them. We must move forward in God and press into the great things he wants to do in our lives. We can also not rest on the good things that we have done in the past either. Paul had done some amazing things throughout his ministry. He performed miracles like healing a crippled man in Acts chapter 14. He delivered someone who was tortured by evil spirits in Acts chapter 16. He even raised someone from the dead in Acts chapter 20. There were many other miracles as well throughout his ministry journeys in the books of Acts. In addition to these miracles, Paul was one of the premier apostles of the early church. He was responsible for the expansion of the gospel outside of Jerusalem and into the Gentile nations. He was also the most prolific writer in the Bible, having written 13 epistles that have survived to this day. His writings serve as an encouragement for all believers. He gave exhortations on faith, hope, love, overcoming the works of the flesh, developing the gifts of the Spirit. He is also responsible for expounding upon the new covenant and what it means to be a disciple of Christ. But Paul didn't lean on any of those things as a means of his salvation, or as a sign of Christian perfection. He said, I haven't obtained. I'm not perfect yet, but I strive forward. Looking back at our accomplishments and saying, I've done a lot. Maybe I can retire and take it easy is a trap. That's a trap that leads to complacency and a lukewarm relationship with the Lord. This is why Paul said, I forget what's behind me and press towards the mark which is that high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 
You could sense the urgency in his tone when he said, straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul said he was straining or pressing, constantly moving toward what was in front of him. And that was the goal, the prize of the upward call of Christ Jesus. To me, this conjures the thought of a race and running towards the finish line. Paul's life was purposeful. He constantly ran toward a heavenly goal. The prize is the fullness of blessings and rewards in the age to come, most especially being in perfect fellowship with Christ forever. Another passage commonly attributed to the Apostle Paul is Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 2, where he said, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Christians must run the race of faith with endurance. The great cloud is not comprised of spectators, but is rather comprised of ones whose past life of faith encourages others to live that same way. And you can read through that in chapter 11. He expounds upon that quite a bit. The race is an athletic metaphor that presents the faith-filled life as a demanding and grueling effort. The English word agony is derived from the Greek word used here. This reminds us all that the race of faith is not a sprint. It's a marathon that must be run with patience and endurance. But the prize at the end is that crown of the victorious one that is waiting for all those who cross that finish line. As we close this section, we've learned that Paul's life was reduced to one thing, pressing forward to the calling of God. He didn't let his checkered past deter him from running the race of life with purpose and with intention. He also didn't rest on his great accomplishments and desire to coast through to the finish line. He wanted to be victorious. And as we look at the end of Paul's life, we'll read some of his final words that he wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the wraith. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Paul may have had a checkered past, but he finished well. He finished his race victorious. He knew there was a crown waiting for him when he got to heaven. Let's all take encouragement from this fact. If we will reduce ourselves to this one thing, this one goal, racing towards the high calling of God, is it easy? No. Is it a sprint? No. It's a marathon. Paul used these words to imply consistent struggle, even agonizing towards it. There will be challenges along the way. But Paul also wrote in Philippians 1 verse 6, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. When we became disciples of Jesus Christ, he began a work in us, And he will be faithful to complete that work. If we follow him, submit to his leading, and run the race with patience. In this devotional series, we've talked about several different topics. One thing you lack, where we were challenged to ask the Lord, what is the one thing I lack to wholly follow you? One thing you need, where we were challenged to prioritize what matters in life. One thing I know, where we were challenged to boldly proclaim what Christ has done for us, even in the face of controversy. One thing I ask, where we were challenged to reduce our life to one singular pursuit, and that is to dwell in his house forever. And finally, one thing I do, where we were challenged to forget our past, both good and bad, and strive forward to enter into the high calling of Christ Jesus to run the marathon of life with endurance to the end. I trust that you have been blessed by this study and invite you to go back and rewatch these videos again and be encouraged by the good thing that God can do in our lives if we will wholly follow Him.